Today we're looking at the Elka Soloist 505. This is an Italian synthesizer from the year 1975. Uh, it's nearly 50 years old at this point. Um, the controls are under the keys, and this was done because this instrument was intended to be an accompaniment instrument to a player of a piano or organ, where they would use this to round out their sound or give a fuller sound. So we're listening to the preset sounds right now which are pretty weak the interesting part of this keyboard comes within what is called the variations where you're able to actually synthesize sounds and allegedly it has a moog filter built into it which does give it some life and interest as a synthesizer but it's not very flexible at all These sounds here are called Cosmic and Telstar, really um, definitive. And now we're listening to the variations, which I think are uh, where you'll find this keyboard actually gets a little bit interesting. It is where you have some creative control over the sound, and um, you can pull the octave one octave down, which does give you the opportunity to create some relatively decent bass sounds. Um, in the preset mode, you have no opportunity. You can tune it, but it's only a few uh, half steps that you can adjust the, the sound. And that is the filter that I'm playing with. Um, I think you'll uh, see that it does actually sound pretty cool. And there are, you know, in the, the variations, there are some, some good sounds you can get out of it. This is a monophonic keyboard, so you can um, you know, keep your fingers on the left side of the board and whatever is the highest note being uh, the signal is what plays. It is not necessarily exciting to play like this, but um, you know, it's the way the, the synthesizer is built, and it does help you do some kind of cool arpeggiations if you want to. It would be really nice if this board just had a little bit more range on the attack and decay. Uh, you know, I've got the attack all the way at the lowest point, I believe, and so it still feels pretty quick to me, uh, but I think we are spoiled in uh, the modern age with synthesizers that do pretty much whatever we want.
So this is a synth you didn't know you didn't want, largely because it is not terribly flexible. It does look cool. It has that Roland SH-1000 look to it. Um, but it is lacking in a lot of flexibility, and it's also really um, suffering from poor build quality. This is a synth that was, you know, it's nearly 50 years old, so finding one in great condition is probably going to be hard. It's not worth the money if you're spending over you know, 50 euros on it. And ultimately, uh, I would say pass on it, although it is kind of fun. Uh, I hope you like what you see here. So like and subscribe for more um, synth content like this. I will be putting out several more as I have a whole bunch more machines in my uh, arsenal to share.